And we're back. What is happening? Everybody, welcome, 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 welcome. Mm. Yeah, ch yeah. That's a Google. Cool yeah. beat. This is. I thought you were gonna say that's a Google. I was like, what? <laughs> I was like, is that a? No, that is. That's a Mike Tyson punch out. Yeah. Um, Mo, Mo actually wanted. He prepared a, a little bit of a rap for to go along with right, this. Right, right, yeah. So <laughs> now's the time. Go ahead. No, I pass on this one today. I'm more of a dancer. Mm. A dancer? Than, what? Yeah. I'd I rather know, have fun dancing. Than, I didn't know uh, that it had to be one or the other. I felt like you could dance and. Oh, you didn't get the memo? <laughs> I thought you could do both. I don't know. I must be doing one poorly because right, right. I thought I could do both. Right. You surprised how hot your microphone is? Yes. Yeah, Willie Duke can maybe because you're quite that. the quite the laugh or something going mm -hmm, on mm -hmm. over there. Well, listen, guys, we're it's a it's a work in progress. We're always improving. We're unstoppable. It's a uh, it's listen, nonstop. Here. There's only one Lou Later show in the universe, and it is recorded 307 feet under the Earth's surface. 309. And don't worry, I'm not gonna say to you will i'm not going to require you oh, to hit okay, any good. buttons right now uh can you i was about to do me a favor and just boost up the the chat a little bit it's a little microscopic oh, well. ant size text coming through you guys know we appreciate your presence the community is the only community on the internet all the other communities um well i guess there's other communities as well <laughs> but there's only one the this is the you understand right <laughs> There's only one the. Uh, thank you, Sheet Dong, for tuning in to CNN Plus Ultra Max Pro. <laughs> uh, shout out, hard. Tony. Listen, guys. It's never not funny. <laughs> Listen, guys. We're happy to be here. We are here for you. Mm -hmm. That's really what we do. Uh, I sit down in this chair and I say, you know what? Today, I want to be there for them. For the community. Yeah, I want to step on. I want to step in and step on. The community? <laughs> <laughs> no, you say, I'm stepping on the mic. Oh, right. I'm, I'm about oh, to step on I the see, mic. I see, I see. You You're know. too gangster for me. Uh, well, I've been described as such. <laughs> it all depends on the circumstance. You know what meme I was looking at recently? It's a meme that has stood the test of time. Okay. Uh, it's the meme of the Netflix show with Pablo Escobar, and he's just sitting alone. Oh, right. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. Very effective. And it's always funny when a meme emerges out of, um, uh, like, pop culture, like uh, uh, fiction. Fiction becomes a reflection of a reality that many feel and relate to. Right. The fiction comes into the real. Because it's like, that's an actor, right? It's, it's yeah. not. But you can imagine, I mean, maybe the actor's just doing a good job here. Why is this meme so effective? I think it's because it's so relatable. Is that is that right? But it's executed properly. Exactly. There's yeah. something about the swing, the oh, outfit. Even the stand. Even the stand with the arms back. Stand with the arms back almost works just as well. But I don't know. The swing has the, dominated. It does. Yeah. But it's a combination of three shots, all of which he... But it's also his physique. It's, yeah. Like dad bod. Everyone can relate. Yeah. It's, it's like imagine the same thing, but it's... Like John Cena. Exactly. It doesn't doesn't work. quite yeah. work the same way. Uh, obviously, the closest, there is a close one, which is Keanu Reeves when he's in the park or whatever on the park bench. No, I don't think I've You seen didn't see too. Sad Keanu meme? I may have seen it. I just can't well, recall sad, it. Well, sad, sad Keanu is like, it's oh, a similar it. energy. Yeah. It's a, And this is a real <laughs> life the, shot. With the bird. And that's a real life shot. So. Uh, oh, man. He looks broken here. But I don't even know which one is better. As far as giving you the emotion, which one is better? Would you say? And are well, they the, and are they even the same emotion? The Pablo one's guilt free. Is it? Well, guilt free in the sense of like it's. I see tremendous guilt in that image. No, no. no. For oh, you, you? You're worried about your own guilt. Yeah. Well, it's a well, that's show. Your, that's your issue. <laughs> this is a real guy. I don't. Oh. He so looks genuinely sad there. I don't. I, I actually don't think he was. I believe he's been asked about this. As you can see, he's being oh, interviewed and asked. Right. I, I think he was, that's just him chilling. Right. I don't think he was that sad. I think it's, we broadcast that onto him mm -hmm. because I we can't that. deal ourselves with being alone on a bench. Mm -hmm. It's also just a picture, you know? If it was video, it might be different. Well, people in the chat are asking you, where is the Discord? What's going on with that? Um, it's almost set up, actually. You're getting there? 
Slow yeah, and I'll send some invites soon. Oh, easy. Oh. You can't just get into the community, you know. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> easy. <laughs> Easy, Will. My goodness. All right. Well, there you go. It's a little update for you. He is working on it. He sent me. You sent me some stuff. I sent you an invite. Can I get in there or what? <laughs> yeah. I am We're not allowed in. I don't know. I feel <laughs> yeah. like he's been so cagey. <laughs> he's been so cagey about it. You yeah. know? <laughs> I was like, when am I allowed in there? Right. And he's like, you, you have soon. The wrong idea. He was like, soon. Okay. It's like, soon. I was like, the, the, the Discord power was going to his head a little bit right he's getting carried away with it he's like oh I, i'll decide who who's allowed in here is that so well he's like uh, invites will be sent accordingly as deserved he sends them via bird <laughs> as applicable i was like i feel like i'm being sentenced to death well yeah <laughs> as necessary I was like, why are you so medieval? Have you been watching those Game of Thrones again? Well, of course. Have you been re-watching those Game of Thrones? Mm -hmm. So, um, yeah. Game so of that, Thrones is actually coming back, you know. They can't come back. They're coming back. How do they come back? With I thought the, they had the I thought they had the final thing. With a spin-off. Oh, spin-off. Okay. Yeah. Do you count spin-off though? It's a prequel. It's a, I was this guy say, heard my volume go up and he's like, that could mean fun. Yeah. No, it's no fun. No fun. That's fun over there. Uh, <laughs> I'm the fun. Yeah, look, he believed me. Too. Yeah. Look, he believed me. He's like, he's like, okay, yeah, you make a good point. He's he like, does uh, know. He's like, I did, I have been pet over there on the couch mm -hmm. previously. We're talking about Otis, by the way, for those that don't know. Don't know about this stuff. Um, what do we got for, for Apple today? We have hackers breaking into your iPhone even when it's switched off. Ooh, scary times. Oh, that's not good. Scary times. Even when it's turned off. You think it's turned off, you think you're safe, Mo. Hmm. You put it on the side table, it's turned off, you think you're safe. Right. Do you ever take your battery out of your phone? My iPhone? All the time. <laughs> Not your <laughs> iPhone, but like way back No, I used to replace the batteries, you know oh, that. Oh, right, yeah. I've been in the game. Yeah. Uh, but no, uh, in the olden, olden days, mm -hmm. take the battery out. That's like when people put a piece of tape over their camera yeah. on there. <laughs> yeah. mm -hmm. It's like the microphone's still listening to everything you say, but the tape's over the camera. No sabotage. Um, uh, no, it's not a thing that I would do frequently. It's one of those convenience factors. It's like having 27 locks on your door. Mm -hmm. No one's getting in. Yeah. But... Neither are you. <laughs> well, you take, are, but it'll take a while. It'll take you so long that you ruined your whole day over this uh, security. Yeah. It's always a... That's why you gotta be like Will and and, and oh. Will use the biometrics. Hey, don't tell them that. What are you doing? Well, no, I mean it, it's not it's not it's not as uh, uh, I'm gonna get hacked. It's not an uncommon thing now. Everyone's doing it. Yeah, it, it's um, I guess convenience really. It's con it convenience, but argue Over security. But we Wait, do I'm it sorry. on our phones. What, what we do your... everyone does biometrics on their phones, and everything's in your phone. All the information there, and everyone does biometrics. Do you not do biometrics on the phone? But you told me something that kind of scared me. I did? Yeah. <laughs> Uh-oh. What did I say? With the smart locks and, you know, taping of the fingerprint. Oh, on the... I apologize. I should never have done that to you. Yeah. <laughs> no, I'm always thinking of these things, the ways in which, uh, you know, you can be demolished. Well, the guys who are going to do it. it are also thinking of ways, so it's good. Those it's good. guys? Yeah. 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 Maybe I am one of those guys. Mo. No, you're not. <laughs> <laughs> you can't say that. Mo was like, you can't. You know, you used to hate it when I would say CNN Plus. That yeah. now you hate it when I say I'm one of those guys. There we go, CNN. Welcome oh, wow. back. <laughs> Welcome back to CNN Plus. You're just encouraging him. Uh, shout out Brandon in the chat. He says the show helps with the with the anxiety and depression lately. Uh, we appreciate you taking part. We help in any way we can. It's not necessarily the intent, but the side effect will take it. I'll tell you that right now. Shout out Alex as well for the super chat. Uh, an iPhone is never really turned off. I guess that's the issue here. Cybersecurity researchers have discovered a way to run malware on Apple's iPhones, even when the device is switched off. A report published by the Technical University 
of Darmstadt in Germany details an exploit that takes advantage of the iPhone's low power mode to track location and perform various malware attacks. LPM allows certain smartphone facilities such as Bluetooth, near-field communication, and or ultra-wideband to run even when the device is turned off or when its battery is depleted. Shout out Cole, so dumb. This is, uh, this, is, this is your guy. This is your Snowden. This is your guy. This is your story. This is the latest uh, Johnny Harris upload. Mm-hmm. This is your Julian Assange. This is your WikiLeaks. This is your espionage. This is your Verizon. This is your Pentagon. Whatever you want. Mm-hmm. Ultra wide band. Uh, I mean, we've heard this before, right? Your stuff is never really off. Mm-hmm. Uh, you need a hardware off switch for all of your communications, some sort of way of completely disconnecting them to feel confident that you are untouchable. Let me tell you something. You're touchable. Yeah. You, I'm looking at you. Me? Yeah, that's right. You going to touch me? No, that's not what I said. <laughs> Ew. Well, you. you're saying touchable. <laughs> yeah, in this case, I mean, in this correlation here to, to not being untouchable. Okay. We're talking like a symbolically here, Mo. <laughs> right, right. Not literally. <laughs> it's rude, actually, what you did there. The current LPM implementation on Apple iPhones is opaque and adds new threats. Since LPM support is based on the iPhone's hardware, it cannot be removed with system updates. Thus, it has a long-lasting effect on the overall iOS security model, to the best of our knowledge. We are the first who looked into undocumented LPM features introduced in iOS 15 and uncovered various issues. Design of these features seems to be mostly driven by functionality without considering threats outside of the intended applications. Find My After Power Off turns shutdown iPhones into tracking devices by design and the implementation within the Bluetooth firmware is not secured against manipulation. You see, it's another one of those moments. Mo, you put 27 locks, didn't you? Mm -hmm. And then when you can't get in, you're mad. You call the customer service. Shout out, Nick. You call the customer service and you say, why can't I get in? And they say, you idiot, you put 27 locks. Right. And in this circumstance, it's the same thing. Most people, they would prefer to have to find my, even if there's some minuscule exploit. Because they're like, I don't know, what am I protecting? I want to find my thing if I lose it. Mm -hmm. And I will sacrifice. I will let the phone ping away. I will let the Bluetooth. I'll let the ultra wide band. Mm -hmm. I'll let the air tag. Because as far as I'm concerned, the convenience in this circumstance outweighs the potential security drawback. Well. You know what your pal Edward would say? No, no. Your pal Edward would say absolutely not. Yeah. Well, don't you dare touch my gain over there. (laughs) I want every bit of my gain. I'm turning my headphones down. You can turn your headphones down. It's the only option in this case. Pretty loud. Gain is not an option. Apple has been notified of the findings the researchers have said, but has not yet responded to the disclosure. So they find the little exploit. They send it to Apple. They say, what you going to do about it? Right. Fix the issue. Or you, don't. Or just give us your insight as to why this is, has to work this way. Right. Mm-hmm. And the benefits and drawbacks of such, and possibly some sort of setting where you could opt out of all of this together, all together, and you're no longer part of the find my situation and all the rest, all the other benefits Mm -hmm. from letting the device remain somewhat active even when turned off. But you're never going to look at your phone the same way, Mo. Sits beside you during those private moments. (laughs) You'll never look at it the same way. It's just always on. I'm looking at you, Mo. (laughs) You're not untouchable. (laughs) Right. Right. Apple facing a lawsuit after AirPods allegedly ruptured child's eardrums. Oh, no. That's not good. With an amber alert. Whoa. Get out of here. That's, that's a nightmare. That's a nightmare yeah, fuel. That, that, that The loud sound in the earbuds, unexpected. I thought you were going to do something there. I was close. I was close, <laughs> and I didn't want to do it to the people. Yeah, I don't do you that. Know, the community. Right. They're not, they're, not, they're not even in a, a, uh, on Discord yet. No. <laughs> All right, we can't do that yet. I'm not on Discord yet. Yeah. That's the last step. Apple's AirPods ruptured the eardrums of a 12-year-old boy in 2020 when a loud Amber Alert was issued. According to a lawsuit filed against Apple in California, you guys ever had the, the eardrum, the rupture, or anything no. close to it? No. Oh, my God. 
Is it painful? Let me tell you something. I mean, I don't know. Oh. <laughs> it sounds painful. A rupture? A rupture? Yeah, it's a very dramatic word, yeah. Uh, you don't. You usually don't want things to rupture. No. Usually. Uh, well. What? I used to fly a lot, and I would get, like, sinus things going on, and then my... my uh, your station tubes would close up and then my eyeball would pop out of my head. I'd place it back in. Right. You have like the, the ear thing. I have things going on. Yeah. One time the flight attendant was was rushing to my aid mm -hmm. as I was... Did she give you a piece of gum? As I turned into a skull... <laughs> his, ear, his eyeballs popping? I, tur <laughs> I turned into a skull emoji. <laughs> All right. On the floor. You probably love oh, that though. Man. That's what I was. And she rushed over to me. And you know what she did? Uh, she hit me with a life hack. Ooh. Yeah, she didn't give me any gum. It's okay. not good enough. What is this? Oh, I think what I happened? know. I think I know actually what it is. Go ahead. Is it the nasal spray that I heard you guys talking about? No, I mean I I mean nasal spray. You gotta they're not a pharmacist. Oh, okay. Can't be hit maybe you with she, a nasal spray. No, I'm saying maybe she hits you with a uh, like a recommendation, like you should get this next time. Yeah, but I'm dying in the moment. My okay. eyeball hasn't been extracted from my skull. <laughs> right. Okay. So she solved the problem in the moment. In the moment, they got techniques up there. Mm -hmm. You know what they do? They take, they they heat up a small towel and they put it in a styrofoam cup. Okay. Steam, hot steam. And then you would hold, you look like an absolute maniac. You would hold the styrofoam cup over the ear canals. Oh. And the hot steam would open up the... Oh, interesting. Would create a pressure scenario. Mm -hmm. That's kind of cool. Would open up your tubes. Right. Which is what I needed. <laughs> right. There was, no, there was no point to pop my eyeball back in its socket until I had relieved the pressure. <laughs> Someone so, says, go ahead, flight attendant. <laughs> exactly. No doubt about it. And so I learned things in these moments. I learned things about myself. Uh, I was sitting next to a woman when it was all happening. And she looked over at me. And she said, I know what you're going through. And I said, how? And she said, because I've been through childbirth. <laughs> There's no way she said this. <laughs> She's comparing that pain to childbirth. There's no way. Mo. No, Lou, I'm not Mo, buying Mo, it. You're Mo, always trying to get me with these. Mo, <laughs> Mo, I swear on anything that she said that. And the reason she knew, because when she saw the cups come out, she had experienced both childbirth and what I was going through. And she said it was worse. What? I felt like my head was going to explode from the inside. I, listen, I swear to you, I went to the doctor after. I was like, I don't know what just happened to me. And they went in and they looked, the eardrum was damaged, uh -huh. and it, it, it felt as though my eyeball was actually getting moving, getting pushed forward by the amount of pressure in the sinus cavity yeah. as the air could not escape. Oh, man, that's brutal. I Look it up, man. I'm telling you, look it up. Oh, now that I know you're not joking, uh, that's that's horrible, man. At what point did you think it was a joke, though? Like, you thought the whole thing was <laughs> no, a joke? I, just, I thought it was a joke as soon as you said it's worse than uh, giving birth. I know, but couldn't you tell uh, how sincere I was? <laughs> no, I couldn't. With the That's eyeball the popping? thing, Lou. I can never tell how sincere you are. <laughs> oh, man. <sighs> well, anyway, you saved your life, then. Well, I got good after that. You know, because I was flying so much back then. I haven't been on an airplane. I mean, maybe I will be soon. I don't know. But I, I, was, fl I was flying a lot back then. And I got good at it. I learned all the techniques. And I, I learned as well, you never, if you have anything close to a sinus infection, stay off a plane or hit yourself with the heavy stuff. Mm. Like you said, you, gotta, you have to take down that inflammation. Otherwise, you're going to be cooked. And so I learned every technique. And uh, and then and then I discovered a product, very amazing product, one way valve system called ear planes. And I think we may have talked about it on the show before, but if we did, it was 500 years ago. So it's worth it to bring it back up. And there are knockoffs of this uh, product, I think, but they're not that expensive to begin with. And you can get it for kids as well, which I highly recommend. And it's better than chewing gum. It, it creates a, it has a one way valve so that if you wear this thing, and you don't have to wear it the whole time. You just wear this thing as you ascend and descend. 
and you're golden. All right. So this became absolutely integral to my travel experience that I would have multiple pairs, even a backup pair of earplanes in the bag. Uh -huh. And I recommend to everybody because you don't goof around with this. Well, hmm? stop goofing around. Okay. Put this in and because you don't know the damage you did. You don't. You just think, oh, my ears won't pop for three days. I can't hear anything. You don't know the damage you did. You wear the earplane, you understand? This is not a sponsored segment. Okay. Wow, they got a new Earplanes Plus in-flight ear... What? It's a... <gasps> it's smart. Oh, my God. They got an app now to measure the in-flight cabin pressure? Let me tell you something about cabin pressure. A lot of these budget airlines, they got cheap on the cabin pressure. You want to know why? Why? They can use older planes. They can use planes for longer. Oh. High pressure cooks the, the lifespan of the jet. Wow. Here's what, I want, here's what I want you to do. Next time, look at what plane you're about to fly in. I also want to know how far you're going. Okay. They cheap out on a lot of these short hops. If you're going long distance, get yourself something nice and new. Get yourself on a 787, okay? Wow, you know planes. Yeah, like I that. might know something. Yeah, he actually does. He just said he 787. Does, yeah. like, I, I got you to know. a point where... <laughs> planes I, and trains. I got That's to it. a point where I was only booking flights. I would look first what the plane was. And if I had to travel halfway across the world, I'd be like, okay, let me check, let me check what kind of... Uh, plane you got. Let, let me check what kind of cabin pressure I'm working with. Wow. And not only that, but the airline and also the 787 had all kinds of fancy techniques for managing cabin pressure, which were really amazing. But, uh, of course, any of those beautiful Emirates jets, though you're, you're golden, obviously. But if you're sensitive to this stuff, you might want to take a peek. And I agree, Matt. This is actual news. This is CNN Ultra, oh. ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> All right, it will. <laughs> That's right. That's right. That's um, great. Um, so they got an app now. That's genius. I'm going to put the app on as well. But in this case, with the kid, it's really unfortunate, obviously. Um, these Amber Alerts, man, that stuff will get you. Um, I wonder if they're the same everywhere. I, I don't know. Remember that weird Amber Alert? commercial we showed on this show a little while ago mm -hmm. right I, I gotta assume there's some version of it in most places at this point and tremendously useful but also in this case obviously potentially damaging but i don't think there's any circumstance in which it should be pumped through to the earbud right because you're gonna see it on the phone if you're listening to your earbuds at some point you're gonna go look at your phone and the alert can be there i don't know mm. but in this case, a kid, who you got some sensitivity going on there. The child, identified as BG in the filing, was watching a movie on Netflix on his iPhone in 2020 while wearing AirPods Pro. Kid's got AirPods Pro going on. Well, no, I'm sure he's bothering his parents. Is that right? You have inside information on this? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> the AirPods Pro were allegedly set at a low volume, but an Amber Alert sounded without warning and the high-pitched noise damaged BG's eardrums. The lawsuit claims that the Amber Alert tore apart BG's eardrum, damaged his cochlea, and caused injuries to his hearing. He has since suffered from bouts of dizziness, vertigo, tinnitus, and nausea. Will? Oh, man. That's terrible. Looking for some sensitivity over there. Can't be making these type of expressions when there's serious stuff going on. What do you mean? I'm and there's listening. permanent hearing loss in his right ear, requiring him to wear a hearing aid. Apple is accused of producing defective AirPods that do not automatically reduce the volume of alerts or equalize notification and alert volumes. The lawsuit faults Apple for failing to include warnings about the potential issue and claims that Apple was aware of the alleged design defects. Man. Um... Many in the past have concerned about, uh, or have complained about, and had concerns about Amber Alerts in general, not necessarily on earbuds, but just in general on the phone, full black. Beedle, beedle. Yeah, yeah. It's a lot. <sighs> Does it go to full volume, even if your volume's low? That's what I just said it did. I don't know. I never had earbuds on during an Amber Alert. No, neither have I. So I can't actually tell you for certain. Now it's a thing I feel like I want to test, but I don't know. How can you? You can't really generate an Amber Alert, can you? No. And I guess who's... Uh, responsibility is this. It would be the phone maker, wouldn't it? 
wouldn't the phone maker, because from the standpoint of whoever issues the Amber Alert, I guess they're sending a set of instructions to each device right. on how to display that. Okay. Like a but, it is a but it is a unique alarm. Your phone doesn't make that noise for any other reason. No. So who creates it? The noise. Who sets the volume? I mean, in this case, they're saying Apple's responsible. Shout out, uh, Jonathan. Yeah. Listen, this if this is if this guy's actually wearing a hearing aid now, this guy you gotta get some damages involved. Yeah. No, that's that's not that's no good. The 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 kid. Yeah. I mean, if this is really rupturing the thing, hopefully it's a it's a recovery. It can recover, my understanding. Um, somebody's saying now I'm probably going to get sued because I yell every so often on this show. <laughs> you guys enjoy that too much, both of you. <laughs> you know, it's for, I have to emphasize certain moments. I can't more. even hear anything. I right have now. to, guys, you don't understand. <laughs> Not anymore. Guys, you don't understand. I have to emphasize certain things. You have to know where you stand. Is this, the, is this here? Is this there? Because it's different. Shift the context. Change it. It's very important. Um, let me tell you, I didn't have an Amber Alert last night, but I had something else. What did you have? Different type of alert. And it was in the middle of the night. It was dark. I was sleeping. Shout out King David. I was asleep. Might have been two, three in the morning. I don't know. And I got a different type of alert. Unexpected. Terrifying. You don't like it. You don't want it. Raccoon in the trash? Nope. Uh, Could have been. Okay. I thought it was like a baby crying because I got those. Right. So I had a, normally I got some white noise going. I got a whole setup. Okay. I heard it through that. Mm. So I turned everything off. Let me listen. Real, real. It's quiet all of a sudden. Can't hear anything. I'm like, am I going crazy? Did I, I must have heard something. And then all I hear, all I hear is whoosh, whoosh, whoosh. Like a knife? Like a knife. Multiple times. And I go, am I hearing that right? I gotta, I get up. I start looking around. You know when you're trying to locate something just with your ears? Mm -hmm. Because you get a sense that the sound is closer than the visual. Or it's in this case, it's pitch black. It leads, I get led to a bin, like a, you know, a type of like a... Like a storage bin? A storage bin. Okay. Quish, quish, quish. What's going on? What is inside this bin? I open up, I open up this bin and I'm rummaging through it and I discover Wolverine. It's an action figure of some kind. Hey, so Wolverine and his hips twist <laughs> like this. But wait, what would trigger this thing? I don't know what triggered it. Nothing. I don't know what triggered it. Oh wait, you don't have Is an end. Battery to this story? operated. I mean, it has a battery, but it was obviously malfunctioning. You're supposed to hit a button. Yeah. You you squeeze the legs. Okay. The hips twist on action figure, like uh -huh. this, right? And, and and the claw comes and it goes whoosh, right. and it goes whoosh, 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 every time you every, but it's a it's a large action figure yeah yeah and it hasn't activated ever for no apparent reason okay what's going on and and nobody even reached for this thing it's in it's in storage no one even reached for this thing in a long time okay well that's scary and so I picked that thing up and of course after I picked up it stopped it was not making any noise. And I'm staring at Wolverine at three in the morning. This is kind of funny. Actually. This is me and Wolverine. <laughs> and I go, you're coming with me. Because mm -hmm. I don't know if you're going to make a noise again. I don't know where to leave you. <laughs> you might make a noise again. I didn't feel right throwing it out or something. I mean, I, I, okay. I, th I thought for a second I'd just chuck it out the door. No, you wouldn't do that. I thought for a second. Because I was like, at this point, it's like 3 a.m. or whatever it is. I'm... Oh. Last thing I need is a relationship with Wolverine. <laughs> right. Wolverine won't like that. 3 a.m.? The witching hour? <laughs> <laughs> so it's then, a haunted Wolverine. So I get Wolverine. I bring him with me. And I just jam him underneath 
a bunch of cushions and blankets. And I'm like, if you make a noise, it's not gonna, I'm not really going to hear it. Right. But he didn't make another noise the entire night. And he's not making any noises now. And you're sure it's uh, Wolverine? Dude, I'll bring it here. If you don't believe me, I will bring it here. I believe you. But Imagine you, bring you it open here? up and then uh, there's no batteries. I'll put the, I will put the Wolverine from this story right here. Okay. I promise you. Is that you. big? It's this big. Oh. It's a big Wolverine. I don't know. He, he says some things, too. There's a button where he can say things. It's some sort of a malfunction. Probably the battery is corroding inside of it and it's going to explode. Oh. And in the meantime, Wolverine's trying to uh, tell me, warn me about his imminent death. Oh, no. Whoosh, whoosh, whoosh. Oh. It's weird, man. I'll bring him in. But it wasn't, an, it wasn't as bad as an Amber Alert, but still it was very strange hunting that specific sound, the sound of blades. Yeah. At I, that time. I had a weird incident last night as well. Um, I woke up around maybe four and it was still dark. But um, the uh, Logitech MX keys that I have here, mm -hmm. I have it at home and they light up in the middle of the night. Yeah, they do. Randomly. Yeah, they do. Usually when I think it was it like a ambient sensor, a light sensor or something. Mm hmm. I don't know. That's so freaky to me. You're talking about like tech horror movies. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> when when things behave the way they're not. And you're like, what? How it's did that so weird. just happen? It just lights up randomly for like five seconds and then turn, turns off. Could again. it have been through the window headlights from a car? Maybe. Could that have provided enough? Maybe. I try to think about how these things occur, but. Sure. Scary stories. Yeah. Scary stories out there. Be careful. Yeah. Be careful, kids. Um, I got this story just <coughs> now. Um, someone emailed me. Let me just shout him out real quick. Mm -hmm. Daniel Schwartz. CNN um, accidentally sent welcome baskets to employees who had been laid off. <laughs> <laughs> I thought this was pretty funny. We didn't after, get one. After the CNN Plus. Well, that's the thing. Uh, after the C CNN Plus streaming service flopped, they didn't catch the news. It didn't flop. It's right, right here. It's right here. Just <laughs> doing better than ever, actually. <laughs> CNN Plus is... Uh, oh, we're hitting all new records. Yeah. All new numbers. Uh, we invested $300 million and uh, we have 10,000 users. We're happy with it. We're fine with it. <laughs> yeah. Shout out, Al Dare. Yeah, that's uh, some bad timing. I guess we know where the $300 million went now. It went to the baskets. <laughs> Just baskets. It went to whatever was in there. They put like some Rolex in the baskets for the employees. They're like, you've done such a great job here. Yeah. Uh, the shipping was delayed and uh, the layoff came before the basket. CNN accidentally sent welcome baskets to employees who were laid off after CNN Plus shut down. CNN Plus, a paid subscription service, launched in late March and shut down weeks later. Imagine that, just weeks. Yeah. The shuttered streaming service left hundreds of employees out of jobs, the Wall Street Journal reported. Looking to stay up to date on the news? Get our daily newsletter delivered to your inbox. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Um. <laughs> CNN accidentally sent welcome bas baskets. I mean, that's what they did. I mean, I don't know if it was accidental or if it was just delayed. I think it was just delayed. A week later, yeah. hundreds of laid-off staffers welcomed the gifts. I mean, that's a pretty cool post, though. That's kind of a relic. It's almost collectible at that point. I don't even want to touch the basket. Yeah. I just want to have the basket and put it in a glass case and, like, as a relic of the existence of the project. Mm -hmm. Yeah. There must be, like, a card saying, like, the potential of CNN yeah. is about to get way better. It's <laughs> it's it's cool. You know what it kind of reminds me of? It's like, and I don't know if you guys have this or not, but do you guys have any kind of attraction towards uh, urban decay? Like, have you ever watched oh, like these videos? Building being taken over by, like, plants and stuff like that? Kind of. Yeah. Or, like or, or, like, it would be a water park that has been abandoned. Right. Uh, and there's rust on the copper. 50 and, years ago. Yeah. And it's like such an optimistic place. Mm -hmm. Like a mall. And it might say at the front, the world's greatest spectacle. Yeah, yeah. And yet... And there's something really sad about it as well. But sad, but also... It's a melancholy thing. Because you also feel some of the residue of the enjoyment that happened mm -hmm. there. Mm -hmm. But that you can kind of imagine 50 fun years things. ago... Kids running around. Exactly. Kids. Yeah. Fun things. Mm -hmm. 
Well, uh, I don't know. I don't know that we can put CNN Plus on the same <laughs> the same stature here, but but I'm saying it's kind of like that. Like they had these grand plans. Yeah, I, I've been. I, I was playing that game with my uh, youngster, Will. Okay. And that's what was going on over there. It was the future, but stuff didn't go according to plan. Yes. And you would and you would show up in different environments where uh, there would be residue and relics and there would be projections of presentations that would have happened originally as they made the pitch for like going to this interplanetary thing you know what i'm talking about horizon yeah that's what i'm talking about forbidden west that's yeah. right you nailed great it. game that's right that's right you nailed it yeah it's some mixture of nostalgia and optimism and then uh defeat and destruction and it's all in one thing it's very comprehensive CNN spent as much as $250 million on the launch and saw meager audience engagement out of the gate, never surpassing 10,000 viewers at any given time. Company insiders blamed former CNN president Jeff Zucker and departed Warner Media CEO Jason Killar, or Killer, Killar, Killer, <laughs> for the failure. This was all ego, all the power play for bigger job or independence, hubris, nothing more, one former Warner Media exec said of Zucker. The only people who ever thought this was a good idea either worked at CNN or were trying to get CNN Plus to hire them. Nobody else. Employees who do not find internal CNN roles will receive six months of severance if they don't leave the company within 90 days. <clears throat> well, good thing we're here to carry on the legacy. Yeah. Here at CNN Plus. Otherwise known as CNN Ultra, the uh, we're the evolution of CNN Plus. So all the news you need, including updates on the status of Wolverine and his battery. Mm -hmm. Elon Musk lookalike banned from Chinese social media for online interaction with the American billionaire. So the lookalike actually found a way to to talk directly to Elon. Is that right, Will? Um, I, I think so. But is the, the look like was doing some type of deep fake or no? Am I crazy here? Maybe maybe you need to fill me in, Will. Chinese man has gone viral on social media for his facial resem resemblance to Elon Musk. Oh, so this doesn't sound like a deep fake. Uh, uh, but his Chinese social media account was recently banned by the Chinese authorities, dubbed Yilong Ma on social media, Musk's doppelganger in China, caught the attention of the American billionaire in December 2021 when a short video showed him standing by a car in a garage with his face looking like a copy of Musk. Elon Musk tweeted humorously on December 20th in a response, maybe I'm partly Chinese. Can we get an image yeah, of I this? I don't know if this is actually real because uh -oh. it would have shown Elon's tweet. Uh-oh. Let me just... Uh... Are, we getting, are we getting spoofed? Maybe. I thought this was a real news show here. Yeah. That looks like a deep fake. I mean, that's not real. It kind of does, eh? Yeah, that's that's not. The lighting's off. Uh oh. Well, what have you done to us here? I mean, I don't. You know. Well, he he is doing videos. Okay, let's can, can, can okay. Can we play the video and then decide for ourselves based on what we see here? Is there a, a way to play it? No, of no. course, of course, there's not. Yeah, of course, there's not. But I'm sure we can find it online. Uh. Cause like, look at that. Click that other one. Click that that one. There's no way. Get out of here. No way. <laughs> American billionaire Elon Musk said he would like to meet a Chinese man who shares a strong res resemblance with him and has become an internet celebrity. On Monday, Musk said, "I'd like to meet this guy if he is real." Hard to tell with deep fakes these days. Oh, he's making a joke. The whole thing's a spoof. Come on. Yeah. Come on, Will. What you doing to us over here? Yeah, they're here? not playing the video. Anyways. Yeah, I mean, there's there's reason for that because no one's going to believe it once they see the video. I saw him standing next to the car. I watched a video at one time. We showed it. But I, I immediately said, oh, it's deep fake. And, but either way, does that, uh, does that mean the guy wasn't suspended? I mean, the guy producing, that's the video I've seen right here. Click it. Maybe without the music. <laughs> yeah, it's obviously a, so, it looks so fake. It's a defake. Yeah, which is fine. Like I don't have anything. There's been deep fake TikTok accounts, Instagram accounts, and mm -hmm. 
-hmm. it's existed in the past it's still tough work and and i'm uh curious why he would be uh banned for this but i'm kind of curious too is it because it can be misleading it is a deep fake but then again, uh, well, seen... they 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 seem to indicate that the reason for the suspension was somehow to do with him interacting directly with Musk or Musk responding to the existence. I have a feeling we're never we're not going to really know. Yeah, there could be. It, I don't think it's hard to get banned on Chinese social media. Yeah. I think you're banned. I'm definitely banned. not me, banned. but you for sure. Yeah. Uh, Elon Musk on why he can no longer support Democrats. They have become the party of division and hate. Oh, where did you get this story from here? And I, I need to see the name of this uh, URL. Oh, B BPR. Biz. Biz Pace Review. This is uh, huh? this is when, w whatever the URL says. What's the website? Uh, biz Pack. Oh, biz pa BizPackReview.com. Willie Do's daily reading over here. Yeah, my favorite site. Oh, uh, who knows? <laughs> Uh, we've told you in the past, guys, that, listen, we have a variety of sources that uh, come to us algorithmically. We only talk about the things that you guys are talking about. Get it? Great. Uh, this doesn't necessarily, it's never uh, necessarily an endorsement of the things that we're discussing. What about the Times of India? Well, whatever. I mean, it Might could be, be better, I, right? I mean, it could be anything, right? It could be anything. And then there's going to be somebody who says, I don't like that source and so on and so forth. Hence the meme about us being CNN is like people have all their yeah. connections and conceptions and preconceptions and configurations and such. Uh -huh. I mean, the information is there. This is the internet that we have to interact with and respond to. Mm -hmm. All of us collectively yeah. to try to spot the deep fakes. Uh, Tesla Inc. CEO Elon Musk said on Wednesday that while he voted for the Democrats in the past, he will now vote Republican. In the past, I voted Democrat because they were mostly the kindness party, but they have become the party of division and hate, so I can no longer support them and will vote Republican, he tweeted. Now watch their dirty tricks campaign against me unfold, said Musk, the world's richest man. The 50-year-old billionaire recently said he would reverse Twitter's ban on former, pres former U.S. President Donald Trump, a Republican, when he buys a social media platform. He also said Twitter is far left biased because it is headquartered in California, a state known for its progressive politics. I don't know. I mean, I'm sure that um, there's some, some sort of realization on his behalf, some sort of... Uh, <laughs> like, nothing, nothing. <laughs> nothing will. <laughs> nothing will. That's why. I, nothing will. Nothing. Okay. Yeah. Nothing. Well, here's the tweet. Nothing will. So it's legit. <laughs> nothing will. Um. Yeah. So I'm sure there's some, some re reason for his statement. There's some sort of an indication to him that this is the case. However, it's also worth noting that people themselves can change. Um, a person's political affiliations. Uh, a person's political stance on certain things. Um, a person's experiences in life. I mean, he completely, he's, he's, he's actively trying to leave California, a Dem Democrat stronghold, mm -hmm. and getting into Texas there, trying some of that barbecue. And you know what happens? You have some of that barbecue, Will. You start voting Republican, I'll tell you that. <laughs> <laughs> I'm joking around, but like, there's there's other indications that he's bumped into his own struggles with uh, Democratic leaders, right? Mm -hmm. He's bumped into his own struggles, and that could influence a person's perspective on certain things. When you are as influential, or when you are as uh, involved in the business community, and we've talked about him being on political committees in the past, where he would show up and offer his some sort of Guidance, insights, advice. and he was on some sort of, and then he left, and he got pissed at Trump and whatever else. And I don't know necessarily he's a huge Trump fan, for the record. It, when he brought up the issue of Trump being banned and coming back, it was for he 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 got into his whole free speech scenario mm. thing that he's motivated about. So, but but yeah, I believe him. 
there you have it. I mean, he'll, he, he'll vote, endorse the Republicans and whatever that means, because if he's vocal about it, it could be influential in any election. He's got a couple of followers. Almonds are out and dairy's a disaster. So what milk should we drink? This is when, when oh man, thank you for finally putting this in. I sent this to you yeah. like a billion years ago. You obviously <laughs> thought it wasn't very important. <laughs> well, I thought it wasn't really appropriate. For Dave? With uh, Dave on the show. Right. Why? Dave? You don't think Dave uh, milks well, any oats? No, you had the graphics card stories. You just yeah. more appropriate stories for Dave. Just trying to find something more. Oh, is that relevant. what you're talking about? I think that's what. So well, you're yeah, he's a GPU guy. <laughs> okay, but you you, th you know for a fact he's not a milk guy. He doesn't milk anything. I no. don't know. <laughs> <laughs> I almost had an answer for that. I was like, hmm, is he a milk guy or not? I don't know now. Yeah. Listen, the milk thing is out of control. Yeah. The, the milk thing is out of control. No, I hear you. And w it came up on the show because we were talking about Starbucks being boycotted or uh, protested mm -hmm. for the the milk upcharge. And it's a curious thing. The, the, the demand from PETA is that other alternative milks to dairy, to cow milk, should be the same price. And I'm sitting there thinking, are they the same price? And I'm sitting there thinking... Uh, now that we have 4,000 different milk options, mm -hmm. what is the environmental impact of each milk? Because all of a sudden somebody sent me something on the almonds and they said, well, only if you want to murder the bees. And I was like, well, I don't want to murder the bees either. Right. And I'm listening to an entire podcast. I don't know what it was. It might have been Radiolab. I don't know. And they're saying, oh, well, you got to pollinate this and that and they got to ship the bees in. The bees never make it home. The bees are so disoriented coming in to do the almond work they get wiped. Mo, I'm not joking right now. No, that's no good. You don't understand. It's a whole ecosystem. But how can that be a vegan option then? Because isn't their whole thing like no animals were harmed? Well, that's the point. A lot of people, they look at an almond and they don't even, and then never, never even mind the drought and so forth. Because the water impact, right? Oh, right. Everything has an impact. Guess what? You live, you want, you want, yeah. you impact. And then it's a question of doing this kind of environmental math to say, well, you know, this one's not bad over here. You're not demolishing this or that, but you're demolishing this other thing. But actually demolishing the other thing is better than demolishing the first thing because right. you will demolish and consume because no yeah. you are human. And you want your milks and you want to milk things. <laughs> you want to milk it all. Mm -hmm. You want to milk the, the cow to start. Mm -hmm. Like, let me milk that. Mm -hmm. You want to milk the almond second? No, soy, actually. Uh, right. People were milking the rice. Then okay. they wanted to milk the oats, the almonds, the cashews. What's next? What's left? What's left to milk? Yeah. Coconut. Oh, how was that not like... Don't forget coconut. Earlier on. Coconut's in there. <laughs> yeah. Don't forget it. Uh, well, if you, once you're milking oats, I think you're milking most of anything. <laughs> <laughs> but anyway, they tried to they they tried to figure out and they uh, compared the variety of fashionable milks okay. as to which might have had the least amount of impact, and mm -hmm. they, they found the almond problem similarly. They argued the lack of nutrition and so forth with the rice. And okay. I think they, they were like, go back to soy. But then the criticism against soy is the monoculture aspect where you're planting. The same thing. Yeah. You wipe out the rainforest and replace it with soy because everyone wants soy. Mm -hmm. Right. Um, there's a couple of merging ones. But if you scroll, you'll see them all. It's a huge industry. It's a massive market. It's a lot of opportunity. Coconut they hate. An That's absolute why. tragedy. Why is this? Stay away from the, I don't know, it's the way it's harvested in poor regions and the, oh, the slave labor uh, aspect of it. Okay. Oh, you like coconuts, do you? Mm -hmm. Mo. Um, uh, I don't know, there's other issues. Coconut is an absolute tragedy. Hang on, hang on, hang on, go back up. I love coconut, by the way. I'll, I'll, I'll do a bounty any day. Uh, paid less than a dollar a day. Palm groves are no paradise. Coconut trees only grow in tropical climates. The pressure to meet global demand is causing exploitation of workers and destruction of rainforests. Rainforests. Mm. I like the rainforest. 
Farmers in Indonesia should be growing food to feed their families instead of meeting international demands. Um, okay, that's their... They, I mean, this is... Listen, the whole point of this article is to poke holes in every milk source. So don't be offended if you are the coconut person because there ain't no free milk. But there, what's the least bad? There ain't no freebies. Let's just scroll, keep scrolling. Almonds, bad for bees. We already knew it. We don't have to go into detail on this. Like I said, the bees are a necessity for this, and they really don't want to be do, doing that. <laughs> That's not their natural behavior. Rice takes a ton of water. The almonds take a ton of water as well. And then there's no nutrition in the rice. Very low nutrition once it's milked. Mm. Hazelnut is on the up. You didn't know about hazelnut. Wow. That's interesting. Do you guys like hazelnut? Oh, sh damn. Will can't do anything. <laughs> I'm a big hazelnut guy, though. So. You consider yourself a big hazelnut. Mm -hmm. Nutella? You get into the hazelnut-type chocolates and things like this. Yeah. For consumers who want the nutritiousness and tastiness of a nut milk, but without the environmental impact of almond, the hazelnut is a rising star. Like all nuts, hazelnuts grow on trees that pull carbon from the atmosphere and help reduce greenhouse emissions rather than increase them. Hazelnuts are environmentally superior to almonds in that they are pollinated by the wind rather than honeybees. They grow in moist climates such as the Pacific Northwest where water is less of an issue. Mm. Hazelnut on the rise. Interesting. Hazelnut milk. Let's start a company. <laughs> Crush it. We're like, we are the milk. All right. Hazel milk. Milky nut. Oh. Hemp and flax, niche contenders. I love hemp. I love flax. I throw it in my booster sometimes. Another way to ensure sustainable choices is to choose milk alternatives, alternatives made from a niche crops such as hemp and flax grown in relatively small quantities in the Northern Hemisphere, which make them more environmentally friendly compared to a monoculture operation. Both plants produce seeds that make for a milk rich in protein and healthy fats. I've never had flax milk. I've never had, what was the other one? Hemp milk. Be interesting. I know hemp has a very kind of... Uh, almost like citrusy thing on my tongue. I like a little oh, yeah. bit. I like a little bit of it. I don't know if I could have a whole hemp milk. Flax, I probably could. What do you, do you where do you, you don't, this doesn't affect any allergy, Will. No. Do you, no, do, I can eat that. Do you deal with the flax or hemp? Um, are they talking specifically like hemp hearts? Well, I'm guessing there's a grinding and there's a soaking when it comes to milk. Yeah, I like that. You'll do flax that. Flax, fiber, might do, yeah. You might do that. Yeah. We're going to do the no guilt milk. Uh, soy is coming back. They're saying, you know what? All things considered with the almonds and the drought and the bees, uh, maybe the soy wasn't so bad. That's what they're talking about right now. But that has the drawback of the monoculture, southern hemisphere, blah, blah, blah. And then oat, they don't mind the oat. They say okay, it. Okay, good. Oh, <laughs> I like the oat. <laughs> Will's I'm like, I don't thing. want to change anything. Where's oat going to line yeah. up on here? Where's my oat at? I just want to know about this. <laughs> oat is considered a humble hero. Interesting. It has good sustainability metrics, but I don't think the nutrition is quite as on point. Will. Oh, right, yeah. I hate to, to break it to you. Let's see uh, what it says here. Um, according to Bloomberg Business, retail sales of oat milk have soared from 4.4 million in 2017 to 29 to 29 million in 2019. Wow. Oats are grown in cooler climates, such as the northern U.S. and Canada, and are therefore not associated with deforestation in developing countries. The only drawback is that oats come from mass-produced monoculture operations sprayed with Roundup pesticides and such. No. Um, There's no winning. However, the popular Oatly brand oat milk company maintains its oats are certified glyphosate-free. Okay, so anyway, the conclusion that The Guardian says is go for the, anything but cow. They don't want cow, first and foremost. Uh... I personally think that there's a time and place for pretty much any milk. I think there's a time and place for pretty much any milk. If I had to rank, do a milk ranking, maybe we should do a milk taste test and we should rank them blind. Sure. Okay. Oh, How many? All of those, those ones. Coconut, oh, soy, oh, no, it's not too many. We're taking a sip, Bo. <laughs> Just I'm the one who has to gather it, so it's just, a little, it's just many to gather. <laughs> Listen, we just order it online, right? You can get okay. the the one in the Tetra Pak style, and it doesn't have, and then we'll refrigerate it here. 
Because we got a fridge now. <laughs> <laughs> we're, we're fridge guys because we're fridge guys. Yeah. yeah. And uh, so we would do um, cow, soy, almond, coconut, rice, flax, oat. Hemp. Hemp, if we can find it. Yeah. And we will find the ultimate milk. <laughs> and hazelnut. We'll see if hazel because hazelnut, they love it. Okay. If we like the hay oh, he can't have any of these. <laughs> Maybe I can skip those. The almond you, as well. You should but. just do it. You just <laughs> you do it. That's what he did to you. I don't know what camera you were on at that moment, but Mo went like this to me. He went, "You should do it." <laughs> he just flung everything he had at me. It was very it was a lot. It was less it was aggressive. Was, no, like it was not. You felt the wind. I did. <laughs> I did. He <laughs> flicked whatever he had. He flicked it at me. Yeah. Something hit me. Yeah. That's the level of aggression. <laughs> you should do. You just do. Yeah. No, Will's not lactose intolerant. He's a uh, nut allergy. Yeah. He can't do the nuts. Yeah. Uh, YouTube now highlights the most replayed parts of videos uh, to let you skip the boring parts. Oh, just what we needed. Oh no. Just what we. Well, no. <laughs> just murder watch time here. <laughs> you're, well, you're saying that as a YouTuber, but, but not as a viewer. You're like, yep. Show me what I need. Mm -hmm. I'm not much of a scrubber. They they did a so. thing a long time ago where you would Google something like a tutorial on how to oh, how to yeah. do something. They still do that. Oh yeah, and it jumps right to the part. Uh -huh. How that's you? amazing. That part is amazing. <laughs> Did you get that, Will? But yeah, I got it. You got that? <laughs> the point he's, is... He's going for it today. Yeah. He's really going for it today. Who's got oh, time to watch God. a whole YouTube video anyway? Well, in the TikTok generation, in the TikTok world... I mean, not the people here in the, the community. They would never skip anything. No. No, no, no. We're here together. <laughs> Beginning I don't end. think they can skip. <laughs> no, 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 no. We are here Live. together. Don't you dare. I'm looking at you. Right now, I'm looking at you. Don't you go anywhere. Uh, but yeah, no, I get it. It's fine. You want to go to the useful part. You're a human being. You're a milk drinker, whichever one you choose. YouTube will now highlight the most replayed parts of videos uh, in its web player and mobile apps. The feature was previously available on an experiment for YouTube Premium subscribers, but it is launching for all users today. You'll be able to identify the most popular parts of a video from a graph that appears behind its progress bar. If the graph is high, then the part of the video has been replayed often. Uh, you can use the graph to quickly find and watch those moments. Pretty simple. But it's interesting to think how this might spill, uh, split the attention of viewers. I mean, what do you mean? Of course it's going to. Yes, this is an absolute. I saw a person the other day clipped out a portion of one of our videos. It was actually, I think it was the original time I was talking. Oh, no, it was when I was talking about burritos. Mm. See if you can find this right now, Will. Okay. It was it was really interesting because it was a clip and share, but it linked back to the original video. Okay. So just, I don't know, type uh, Lou Later Burrito, if you don't mind. Let's see if, I don't even know if you're going to be able to find it. Is it even searchable? Oh, interesting. It's not. It's an uh, It creates an unlisted link, and obviously I don't want you to go look for it now. But it creates an unlisted link that you can then share in social media, but only the clip portion. Hmm. So that's kind of like a little bit of a precursor and how socially you would often, like even for me, if I was to put a link in, let's say, our chat, our company group chat, yeah. you could see how useful it would be to send you right to the part of the video oh. that I need you to see. Mm -hmm. I mean, that doesn't happen that frequently. But I'm sure viewers feel that same way. The problem is when you have a video that people typically watch for entertainment and then the the kind of insane pace of take me right to the part, take me right to the part, take me right to the part, take me right, like conclusion, conclusion, conclusion. There's no buildup. Yeah. It would be really uh, difficult as you look at this graph. You just go to the peak retention points and... And then make your decision whether it's worth it, which at that point you're not going to... It's hard. It's going to be... Yeah, it's a little tough. I mean, I I'm sure there's still be viewers that invest in the thing and turn it off, but there's going to be a lot that just go right to those parts. Hey, you know, whatever. Inevitable. Inevitable. Right, right. Inevitable, Mo. And, and, and here's the thing. Here's That's what true. we need to do. Because 
as much as we sit here in this show on behalf of the community, we also live our lives, not just as the creators of things, but also the consumers of things. And I want you to take yourself out of the framework of being the guy who makes the things and posts the things. Yeah. And into the framework of the guy who watches. And all of a sudden, it's a new man. All of a sudden, yeah. it's a different guy. Just, just You just have to occupy both spaces at different points to understand where people are coming from, to understand where the YouTube is coming from. Right. Go ahead, yeah. Mo. Go ahead. I I like watching like story based content, or, like vlogs or A to B. It kind of ruins it for me to scrub and uh, uh, you know go to the exciting part right in the beginning. Uh, like we were earlier talking about that Johnny Harris guy. Mm. How much of it is build up? How much is of it is like you need to care about this and. Like that part of the story. Or well, that part in of his the video, case, though, you got to give him credit for information density. Yeah. If you are packing so much into each 10 second segment, then I think there's a, f hopefully, I mean, I'm sure the reason the videos are doing well is because there's a feeling that the viewer has of not needing to skip. It's like, wow, this right. is all so important. Mm -hmm. Even though it might not be the conclusion or the climax, it's all so important. It works better for some genres than others. And we're seeing, yes, you're right. You know, we're seeing yeah. things... Like, if I'm watching a tutorial, take me to the part. Take me to the part. Yeah. Take me to the part. Uh, so, anyway, uh, I'm sure you're going to be able to turn it on or, not, on or off. Mm -hmm. And I'm sure everybody in this community doesn't have to worry because their <laughs> attention is already rock solid because they sit here with us for, like, three hours. <laughs> yeah. So, just compliment. <laughs> I just want to compliment everybody in the community. You are not... You the, are very patient. You people. are not the TikTok crowd. Like you, you're a different thing. And mm -hmm. and honestly, for the most part, so are we. Like I don't really engage with the short form either. And I'm much more likely to engage with the long form on YouTube. And I will much more carve out a, a little bit of time to watch like a 20 minute video that I that I want to watch or see your support mm -hmm. instead of 21 minute videos like i'm that's never going to happen at this point in my life i'm never right. going to watch 21 minute videos mm -hmm. and you'll see that might change for you as you as you guys uh out there as your lifestyle changes and your hab your viewing habits might change as well so we'll see youtube's new tool for brands means you don't have to see the same ads nauseam Interesting. Although it's up to brands to impose the limits. What is this tool? So so it would it would be some sort of capacity limit for the number of times you would see one yes. single ad. Sometimes it's too obvious when a company is launching a big advertising campaign. If you're a regular viewer, you may end up seeing the same ads over and over. Well, in the advertising world, uh, seeing the same ad over and over tends to be effective. It's a good thing. Yeah. Yes. Mo's nodding over there. <laughs> I, I see, I buy. You show me, I buy. Yeah. But there is a limit to it. Yeah, they found studies it might be a negative impact. At a point, for at sure. A certain point. Yeah, like number three or four, whenever it gets annoying. Mm -hmm. um, Due also, to, I guess, the frequency. location of the ad. Yes. Sh shout out TechMed. Uh, and I think that's another one that changes with age and exposure. Mm -hmm. Like my kids, I feel like, I'm like, why aren't you logged in to the premium? What are you doing? Mm -hmm. And they can just wait, skip, wait, skip forever. Yeah, and I'm just, I can't. Exactly. The fatigue for you. Yeah. And the same thing goes, I think, when you have enough um, a, a frequency. When it's too, the, not, not just the amount of total ads, but the amount of the same one. Like, th it's possible to have a good ad. Mm -hmm. It's not impossible. We talked about it on Instagram, something yeah. targeted. But even the best ad has a certain amount of times you want to see it. Right. The best ad, the best video. Yeah. Like oh. the Super Bowl, they send like they spend like a billion dollars. Or you get an ad of something you already bought and they're still trying to sell it to you. It's like mm -hmm. I don't need to see this ad. Right. You hate I already that. bought it. You hate that. Yeah. When I don't it comes know why. after. Yeah. Yeah, I get that too. I don't like it. Well, I'm almost annoyed of buying the thing. Mm. It's like you're still trying to get me to buy it. I already bought it. Leave me alone. Yeah. Yeah. YouTube announced it's expanding the power of tools that let brands control how often they're... And well, see, this is on the brand side. It has to be on the user side. The user should be able to select how many times they're willing to see an ad. Hmm. I guess you'd have to bury that feature. Otherwise, YouTube would be like, well, who do we show ads to? 
Everyone selected one time. Yeah. The ad frequency tool named Display and Video 360 was actually launched in February to cover ad campaigns running across different smart TV apps, including YouTube's app and apps from rivals like Hulu. But YouTube has confirmed to The Verge that the program also counts ads shown not only on smart TVs, but across its mobile and desktop platforms. Um, this is going to be smart for advertisers to figure out where that fatigue level is and to actually do this in a sophisticated way to annoy people less. In order to, for, for you know, if a people get, if a person gets annoyed with your brand or product, it's not a good look. Of course, not. figure it where that, where that fatigue level is, and then optimize. So, it's a good thing. I like it. Shout out, legend. All right. Uh, Google opens up is Bayview HQ, the first campus it designed itself. All electric campus design focuses on sustainability. Oh. Hmm. That's kind. Cool. What does it remind you of when you look at that, Mo? What do you see here? Like a sports dome. Hmm. I feel like there's something like abstract going on. Like I'm, it's a some kind of a grid, but it's placed off. Mm -hmm. you Are those solar panels? That might be. That might be a solar panel. Really? That's really cool. Uh, <laughs> I don't know if it is. I, I, I always like, like I always like when M Moon posts because because of her profile there. <laughs> Just the eyes. How <laughs> she's barely in it. Oh. <laughs> Here we have a shout out for Brevin who says, "You tell me to buy, I buy. You tell me to sell, I sell. You tell me to go ahead, I go ahead. And if you show me <laughs> enough times, I also buy." So shout out Brevin. I understand where you're coming from. Thank you for the super chat. Yeah, M Moon really knows how to do it. Well, would you agree? Uh, yeah. Yeah. I like the confidence in that profile pic. Yeah. I don't know if these are solar panels or not, but it's an entirely electric facility, so chances are they, they, there's some sort of energy-efficient stuff going on. Yeah. Hmm. Google's finally opened its Bayview campus to employees almost 10 years after re revealing its initial plans for a new facility back in 2013. First Google campus says the company is designed by itself, and it definitely doesn't look like the traditional offices you're used to. One of the first things you'll notice about the new HQ, the roof looks like dragon scales from afar. Wow. Is that what I was seeing? I don't know what I was seeing. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know what I was seeing. Hey, man, I don't even know what I was saying, man. What are you, what are you saying, man? Is that dragon scales? Did I really did I even see that, man? Oh, man. Made up of 90,000 silver solar panels capable of generating almost 7 megawatts of energy or up to 40% of the new office's energy needs. Wind farms nearby will also provide the energy needed to run the all-electric HQ that has two kitchens equipped with electric equipment instead of gas. In addition, the campus has automated window shades to let a lot, a lot of natural light in during the day and a ventilation system that uses 100% outside air. The new campus also houses the largest geothermal installation in North America that will help heat and cool the campus without the use of fossil fuels. It even reduces the amount of water used for cooling by 90%. This geothermal pile system uses pumps to absorb heat from the ground during wintertime and to send heat into the ground in the summertime. You gotta love it, don't you? You wanna play a little bit of the clip? Yeah. Ooh, the environment. I heard a bird, I saw water, I saw I a plant, you know nature. About the future. Yeah, you're going, no, you put the oh, audio. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Let's get in. Let's get immersed in Google. I want to be immersed in Google. <laughs> okay. Google, can you please immer immerse me? Oh, man. That is Shout out, cool. Ali. It Charles is very cool, Charleston Bayview yeah. represent the first time that we led the concept and construction of our own major campuses. And it's an opportunity to rethink the very idea of what an office building is and rethink what's possible for the industry. Did you see the roof? They were like layered over it, like a uh, like shape. We had like people a walking by yeah. and they're like, what is this? Like, they don't even know. It doesn't look like an office building, which is so fascinating because then when you come in, you have no preconceptions of how to work that comes from historic ways of working. But instead, it's like a canvas of creating new ways of being together. Oh, thank you. <laughs> With these projects, we really thought about people first using things like healthy materials and air quality. Everyone has natural light and has thermal, visual, and It looks like an airport. Down it on does. The level, this oh, is really this like kind of cool the design there. It's where we have our meeting rooms, cafes, where you can connect with your community and collaborate. And then up here, it's more quiet. 
you're really focused on that immediate team. The premise around some of the team space is that there is physical collaboration, but there's enhanced virtual collaboration that's going to happen also. This new hybrid world, mm. work is going to change, but this building can adapt and flex to meet that. There's a straight line from people first design to sustainability. It's actually the largest project to ever pursue any element of the living building challenge. Oh, show me the roof. And it seems over there. critical. Run away straight away, but capturing that. The way that it is tucked into the nature is, is not just a scenic garden for the enjoyment. That would otherwise have gone in cooling. We're also getting water positive oh. performance out of this campus. There was a commitment at the highest level to making something that was regenerative design. Man, this is a cool building. Well, yeah. What do you think they spent on it? Set of partners, both in the design. But the biggest one that we. Well, did what did they spend on it, Mo? Was the uh, breaking down separation dollars. between Mo? buildings billions. and power. Sound like an investor. It's starting to good use either for the perfect levels of. I guess there's several the building, buildings, and all right? The excess photons it's not just one big one. You know what it I think? Like I think it, three. You know what I think? It might be several How buildings. Many buildings that will be vibrant decades from now. Could we think oh, wow. about the design? He bends down and then inspects <laughs> things. Yes. Emotion is a function. Look like Pearson Airport, man. Finished it does. Stone. It's a living, working laboratory. Yeah, like I don't, I don't know. I mean, it's cool. Don't get me wrong. Mm. What? I think it's really cool. Look no, at it's this. cool. Don't get me wrong. Yeah, but you're saying it's just the airport. I don't think so. So, give me a picture of Pearson Airport inside, or or even better yet, do that airport in Singapore or whatever it is. After, 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 after. It's very similar, man. Yeah, Pearson's cool. It's got like it's got like uh maybe this image doesn't really do it justice, but like it's got a similar glass curve thing going right. on. I, I guess I guess uh theirs had a little bit more shape to it and it, it kind of felt like sails almost like fabric. Yeah. Look at this Singapore airport. What? Oh, okay. Well, this this wins. you want you want to work there. Click this. the click the top one there. Will without the lights. Like, look at you want to work there. Yeah, this wins. Plants, right? And I, I mean, look at the waterfall. That's unreal. Yeah, that's what I'm saying, man. So yeah, they might need more plants in there. <laughs> more greenery. Will. I think. Is you that I, mean? I felt like that was missing as well. Well, yeah, I felt like you you were living. It's supposed to be a living thing. I wonder why. I wonder, oh, are you talking about Google needs more plants? Yeah. yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah, I thought yeah. you were saying not, they, they did all not, this architecture and this environmental thing. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, all hmm. the plants are outside. Which is fine. <laughs> Which is good. Nothing wrong with that. Yeah, no. Uh, but for the billions and one, uh, it's cool. It's cool. It's definitely cool. Yeah. Everybody wants to work from home now, anyway. And by the way, uh, since the thing is, since we're. 300 feet below their surface, mm -hmm. we have no cooling costs at all over here. We also lack plants. Oh, yeah, you're right. <laughs> I don't know that they can so, live. I don't think they can live down here, Will. Oh, okay. There's no sunlight. Yeah. No, they have uh, oh, products for that now. What do you, we're just doing hydro, hydroponics. Mm -hmm. uh -huh. Okay, fine. Deal. Anchor says this new USB-C hub lets M1 MacBooks output to three external monitors. By default, they can only output to one. Yeah. A, a USB-C connection that can do three external monitors at what res, Will? What resolution? Anchor, you better you better so, show me what you're talking about. They delivered, man. Okay. So uh, they have one port that's 4K 30. Okay. And, 30 and then hertz. two mm. other okay. ports that are 2K 60. I'd rather do 2K 60. 30 drive me crazy with the cursor. Sure. Yeah. For the they, cursor. But actually for video, it's okay. They said um, watching a movie or something. Just you know, use it on the 4K. You might put a movie on. Yeah. Which movie? Uh, I watched Godzilla vs. Kong the other day. It still holds up. It's pretty good. Really? Mm -hmm. What is that? Is it the boat and everything going on? Yeah. And then they got the Kong and he's in the chains and then he's fighting. With the axe. Yeah. yeah. Which one you like? Who you cheer for? Kong? I cheer for Kong. You cheer for, you're supposed to cheer for Kong, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. The Anchor 563 dock has a total of 10 ports, including USB-C, USB-A, 3.5 mil audio, and Ethernet. 
but we're most interested in the display connectors, an HDMI port that goes up to 4K 30 hertz, a second HDMI 2K up to 60 hertz, and a display port that's also capable of 2K 60 hertz. So a triple display setup coming off of one single Type-C connector. Here you can see some of the resolutions displayed, different options if you want to do a single display output or um, a, a multiple display output. So I didn't know that M1, um, at least the 2021 versions of MacBooks, only could support one uh, monitor. Yeah, Did not the pro, that? not the pros, not the pros. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But so, I, I didn't know, and uh, I'm using the M1. Are you telling me that Anchor's gonna sell a few of these? Is that what you you just said to me? I, I think so. Yeah, but uh, also the M, the M1 2022 version does support two mm. displays well it's you know, just i guess this is just my scenario but well here's this the thing is cool also mine nonetheless yeah here's the thing here's the thing guys uh you might want to dock anyway for all the extra ports yeah right like you've also got a bunch of extra usb ports usb a ports you might want those right uh -huh. you might want to charge up you might want to charge more than one device Look at this guy. That could be you. So it's not strictly about the monitors. It's also about the versatility of a dock when you have mm -hmm. when you have a, live a laptop life. Because now you need all these extra with Ethernet stationary USB well, yeah. options for a keyboard or a mouse or whatever else you want. So we love the docks. Yeah, around here, and uh, I'm sure this one is no exception. It's pretty cool, actually. Everything yeah. you get on there. Uh, Black Mirror is coming back for a sixth series. The new series will be even more cinematic in scope. Uh, they, but it, is it going to be just regular Black Mirror or mm -hmm. just regular Black Mirror? Yes. Not fancy, like Bandersnatch. Bandersnatch no. Because I can't handle those. It's a, it's asking a lot. Choose your own adventure. No. Yeah. What am this I doing? This is just a regular. Like, what am I? Am I alone mm -hmm. at home or what am I? Um, Fotis wants to shout out Vangelis. The guy who created the original Blade Runner soundtrack, he says, rest in power. I guess he must have passed away. Yeah. Uh, big fan of the original Blade Runner soundtrack, so definitely shout that out. No matter how much time passes between Black Mirror seasons, the series always manages to feel just as unsettlingly prescient as when it first began airing. That's true. I've been watching those Black Mirrors. I've been watching those. I don't know what the best season was or whatever. There's certain episodes that stand out. Yeah. I mean, they're not even really episodes, I guess. Each one is its own. Its own little story. Sort of thing there. Yeah. Um, details are largely being kept quiet, unlike the uh, Bandersnatch. And the fifth series that came before Black Mirror's anthological six series is reported to consist of more episodes and be more cinematic in scope. Well, I think they're speaking to you, Mo, and your background as a filmmaker. Yeah. Hanging around film students or whatever it was you did. I don't know what you did. Mm -hmm. Is that what you did? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Sums it up, Leslie. Yeah. <laughs> you would just be around like and you'd just be like I would just hang around them. You'd be That's like uh I like this atmosphere. You yeah. you would be like <laughs> you'd be like, I'm gonna come over later and we're gonna talk about cinema. Yes. And that was the actually what the night consisted of. Uh -huh. Yeah. Yeah. I know you're making a joke, but I've actually done this. <laughs> yeah, you would have you would have the glasses, prescription glasses that you didn't need, but they were circular. <laughs> oh, no just so I could uh <laughs> oh, baby. All right. Otis was ready to defend the premises. He was, he was, was that Vin? Heard the intruders. Oh, we should get Vin on the show. Um so apparently the show is going to take even bigger swings. There's currently no word on Black Mirror's sixth season is set to begin production. Yeah, I'll, I mean, I'll watch. If there's something I'm going to watch like this stuff, it does feel kind of reflective of some of the, the feelings and fears that people have or, or, or right. around in our space, mm -hmm. AI, technology, and so forth. So it's always uh, interesting to analyze yeah, and I, they do a good job, really. Well, they just do a good job. They, they just make really good... Uh, they do a good job. Yeah, they just do a good job. And th this concludes our cinema talk. <laughs> do you have a favorite Black Mirror episode? They did a good job. Uh, or like one that like sticks uh, out a little bit? Well, obviously the first one sticks out with the pig and the... That's uh, not the... 
but yeah. Yeah, that one sticks yeah. out to me because it was my first exposure. I was like, yeah, this could happen. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it was a social media yeah. ultimatum. Mm -hmm. And I was like, that could happen. But then the social credit score in a follow-up season. Oh, yeah, yeah, that one is a good one. Yeah. Very uh, relevant. Mm -hmm. um, there was that Junipero one where... Yeah. And I don't even watch anything. So, like, this, that... that tell you listing three is kind of incredible. I don't even watch anything. <laughs> so, I don't know how it's going to be. But maybe if I can justify it, like, we can chat about it on this show or something. Mm -hmm. Then yeah. maybe it's going to be me watching the sixth season, but I think there's I've actually may have missed some. Uh, there was the pain one, the dude with the pain. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. 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 They went to uh, like a. Uh, so you're you're, you're you're a big you're a big Black Mirror as well. Yeah. I feel it coming. You're exuding right now. <laughs> I mean, we talked about it before too. I know you're exuding. Yeah. There's also good. another show. Um, Love, Death, and Robots. Oh, you guys... great show. Somebody just shout that out in a super chat. I don't know who it was, but... Kishore? Yeah, somebody shout, shout out. it out. Also, shout out Legend. Mm -hmm. Um, This is Black Mirror Ask, Will? Uh, yes. But mm -hmm. it's, some of the episodes are R-rated, so don't yeah. watch it with your kids. <laughs> NSFW. Yeah, but yeah. some are just amazing. Just Some are just with, amazing. Like four kids, I would say. It's made for kids. It's, you, like, it's, uh, it's on YouTube Kids. No, no, it's not. <laughs> it's like Mo uh, disagrees. Pixar kind of. Yeah, it is animation, animated storytelling. Yeah. Animated. No, but it's cool. I I was on the same boat as you. Right no, now. I you don't know what boat I'm on. Mm, the way you said it. No, you don't. The way you said it. No, you know, I'm on a boat. I'm flying. <laughs> I'm on a speed boat. I'm flying. I'm on a. My boat says Red Bull on it. <laughs> right. Don't worry about my boat. Okay. <laughs> Sometimes you gotta ride the bull. Yeah. Don't worry about my boat. All right. Yeah, um, yeah. Maybe we we'll, we'll, we'll check it out. We'll. Okay. Yeah. We'll do it. Multiverses preview. Um, what? You know, uh, Smash Brothers. Yeah. Um. So Warner Brothers is doing the exact same thing with their IPs. Oh, they bring it all together. So it's like a fighting game with Batman and Scooby Doo. Scooby Doo. <laughs> Yeah, it's all their IP. What what connection is there between Batman and Scooby Doo? So this kind of came out of nowhere. Yeah. Um, yeah, all these different characters, and it looks like it plays like Smash Brothers. What's wrong with your headphones? So you're fighting each other? Yeah. Like, but it's like a one-on-one -on -one combat, like Street Fighter style thing. Yeah. Except you're jumping more. And there's yeah. different levels, and you're jumping around. And different towers. Yeah, and stuff it's like kind of yeah. like Smash Brothers. I think there's like four players. Are you? Are is it getting competitive? Yeah, I I think that's what they want. Wow. After spending more than 12 hours with an alpha build, consider my attention firmly held. Multiverses is a blast with several unique spins on tried and true platform fighting mechanics all brought to life by their actual voice actors. It all adds up to a game that, upon first impression, seems primed to become the next big thing in free-to-play gaming. Ooh, free-to-play as well, Will. Oh, wow. Mm. Free-to-play, and then I'm buying the skins, I'm gambling, all the rest of oh. it. <laughs> but at least it gets you in the door. Yeah, right. yeah. You are trying. This is a gameplay oh, is here. It? Yeah. Yeah. That's what it looks like. It's always a lot more jumping. Platforming. Yeah. You're always jumping, aren't you, Will? Uh-huh. Which is fine. Which is fine. <laughs> yeah, I mean, it's um, it's nice to see another competitor to Smash Brothers. So I'm playing this with friends. Is that what I'm doing? I think so, yeah. yes. Yeah. Okay. It's uh, good to know. Yeah. Yeah. I just need to well, know. I need to cool. know how, how, it all, how it all works. And I, I'm getting it on uh, console. Is that how it's happening? Um. Well, I, I, I mean, assume it would be so. smart to release it on everything, right? Yeah. You giving but, them uh, advice right now? <laughs> and do like a cross platform. <laughs> this is a long article. I didn't read all of it. But, uh, I'm pretty sure. <laughs> I recommend you launch it across platforms. PlayStation 4, PlayStation 5, Xbox One, Xbox Series X, and S and PC. That's it's very smart of them. Although not Nintendo. Ooh, because you're the Nintendo guy. Uh, yeah. I like to. I like also, to, they copied Nintendo. Is that how you got? Is that how you got your nickname? 
Well, Dandel? <laughs> <laughs> So normally, stupid. normally so you're stupid. able to it's hold so a straight face. It's so stupid. It's so stupid. It's so stupid. What did you call me? Motendo. No, yesterday. I, I gizmo. might stay to this one. I might. This is better than Gizmo. Motendo. Uh, tell me what you really think, Motendo. <laughs> All right, we can use that one for a while. Really? Yeah. You, you agree ahead. to that one. You hate all. <laughs> I do. I okay. do. But sometimes you just got to pick one. Yeah. Damn. That's a, good, that's a good one. Nice. Okay, Motendo. Whatever you say. <laughs> you tell me I say Motendo. Bionic reading using font weights to increase reading speed. Ooh. I thought this was actually pretty. You're talking ingenious. about efficiency hacks? Yeah. All right. So I'm supposed to see if I can read the one on the right faster than the left. And uh, that's because certain portions are, they're not highlighted. They're bold in order to enhance their appearance. So like the, you know, bionic reading, the first two words, bio and read are All you need to know. Bold. Yeah. Yeah. And your brain is supposed to kind of make up the rest. Yeah. To form the sentence. Yeah. And and when they talk about reading, they they say you're like at a, at a really high speed, you're not actually reading the word. You're just so familiar with the formations and shapes of yes. words that you're just reading the shapes, uh -huh. the high points and low points and such. All right, let me try the first one. This is reading as before. This is plain old-fashioned reading. Bionic reading is a new method facilitating the reading process by guiding the eyes through text with artificial fixation points. As a result, the reader is only focusing on the highlighted initial letters and lets the brain center complete the word. In a digital word world dominated by shallow forms of reading, bionic reading aims to encourage a more in-depth reading and understanding of written content. That's non-bionic reading. Mm -hmm. However, I think that the true advantage here is reading not, in, not yeah, out reading. loud because I don't think a person can read fast. I mean, without speaking incredibly fast. Yeah, but you're a rapper, so... That's, it, <laughs> that's right. <laughs> I think that actually might have been rapping. I don't even know if I was reading there. Somebody put a beat under. <laughs> Let me see if this is actually uh, easier, though. Bionic reading is a new method facilitating the reading process by guiding the eyes through text and artificial fixation points. As a result, the reader is only focusing on highlighted initial letters and lets the brain center complete the word. In a digital world dominated by shallow forms of reading, bionic reading aims to encourage a more in-depth reading and understanding of the written content. You know what? Actually, I think it is easier. It does work, right? I think it works. And I think if it were in my head, obviously I'm reading out loud because we're on a show right now. But I think if I was reading in my head, it would be less fatigue and I would be reading through it faster. So, so this Reddit post got many awards. Yes. <laughs> There's like show... cash and flames. and Yeah. To showcase that it does work, like even in the comments, you know, and, you know, the audience can try for themselves. Yeah. You can go check this out. Um, uh, actually, they can just do it. You can just make the thing big and they can just do it right here, right now. I did. Yeah. Oh, you did. Yeah. So you felt like they, they've already effectively tried it. Yeah. Here you go. You try it yourself. I'm going to try in my head. Oh, God, yeah. Oh, God, yeah. It's way faster. Right. I can read an entire... So what? Can I get books like this now? Can I get the bionic reading version of it? Dude, they totally should. They probably exist, I would assume. Um, no? Maybe not the main books. Like the... Hmm. But even like textbooks and... Textbooks, I'm yeah. I'm sure you can get like PDF versions of books like this. Someone says... Someone says... Uh, I already read the text once, which that probably did influence me. The fact that I read the old school reading and yeah. then the... Someone else says Lou uh, is reading Rap God. <laughs> the Rap God of reading. Right. I don't know if you knew that, Mo. I think he's making a reference to the Eminem. Track. Uh, I believe he is. <laughs> yeah. I believe you might be uh, correct on that. Shout out, Brevin. Appreciate the super chat. Uh, you tell me to say, I say. Yeah, I agree. A giant sinkhole with ancient forest inside found in China. A team of Chinese scientists has discovered a giant new sinkhole with a forest at its bottom. The sinkhole is 630 feet deep. Um, oh, my God, Will. Deeper than ours. Deeper than we are right now. Maybe it's below us somewhere. Yeah. Remember when you were a kid and you'd be on the beach and you'd be like, I'm digging a hole to China. <laughs> yeah. And your friends took you seriously? Yeah. They're like, wow, maybe we'll get there. And then a the parent's like, it's time to go home. And really, you just have a muddy pit. And <laughs> yeah. It's like you start filling it with water. Two feet deep and you'd never made it anywhere. No. Yeah. Uh, go ahead. This is a video. Interesting. I think Ryan sent this. Uh-oh. Is this bogus? Oh, jeez. 
So what do you mean? Well, I <laughs> you just this, heard Ryan. Oh, this, no, <laughs> the slideshow. What is this slideshow? It doesn't look real. I mean, maybe it is. It uh, okay. All right. <laughs> Just another major. It's just longer major. in the slideshow. Yeah, I, like, don't, I don't know. I don't know. Do like, that. no, I'm looking at the definition of the images, and but I'm looking at the watermark with the news agency, mm-hmm. and then actually these photos. There's like a okay, well, that's Getty, Getty images. images. But the thing is, this doesn't seem that deep. That doesn't look like 630 feet. Maybe, Maybe this is just the rim. Yeah. There you go. Well, I mean, Maybe it's. I again. mean, it's cool. It's cool. I'm. I'm into it. Oh, look at that. I mean, some of these images Couple are amazing. They 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 look. Uh, Whoa, that's a cool image. I mean, they look they look good. Yeah, they we need to good. see a video, right? Yeah, we we. <laughs> Archaeology news, six hundred thirty feet deep. I mean, okay, it's okay. cool. Oh, you're going you're going for it. I'm you're gonna going try. deeper. You're going to go six hundred and thirty feet deeper to verify. This particular news story. Because I wonder why they don't have any footage. Um, you would think that they would film some it. video. Yeah. Yeah. Slideshows make me nervous on the internet when we're. Uh, wait. That, how about that? Breakfast television right there, seven hours ago. Or you think you're going to get. You think you're going to get a. Yeah, you do it like that. Okay. So they just discovered this. I guess that's what's cool about it. You're just walking along. You're an investigator of sorts. You're a geologist. Yeah. And you're like, whoa, look down there. And then you have a magic moment where you're like, well, this is, they should use this for some type of film next time they got Godzilla and Willie Doo's going to try to watch it. Mm-hmm. When he sets up his HDMI, uh, his USB-C hub, and then his HDMI 4K 30 frames because it's all he needs for his movie about the giant sinkhole that uh, houses... Mm-hmm. The next King Kong. Am I right, Will, or what? Yeah. Why is Otis just coming full speed? <laughs> he's, he's, he's so happy. He's coming back home. Anyways. Yeah, he knows where he belongs. Yeah, I mean, I'll set up my computer in the sinkhole. <laughs> Interesting. That's a different take. Yeah. All right, last one. Wisconsin man marks 50 years of daily Big Mac meals. Oh, it's one of these ones where it's uh, I the super committed McDonald's buyer. Okay. Mm-hmm. So did they t- they took out the D O N? Is their name Don? What's with the sign? I think it's just so yeah, bad. Don Gorski. Oh, of Fond du Lac, Wisconsin, celebrating fifty years of eating McDonald's Big Mac nearly every day. He said he only missed eight days in five decades. What did he have those eight days? <laughs> he was sick. Oh, okay. I just made that up. I was just thinking. But like, I assume, like, if you had a stomach thing going on, right? You're like, okay, you might skip the Big Mac. <laughs> Maybe he wants to try a different burger. <laughs> That's easy, what I'm saying. I'm like, geez, <laughs> 50, fifty years. A Wisconsin man who earned a Guinness World Record for the most Big Macs eaten in a lifetime celebrated another milestone. Fifty years eating a Big Mac nearly every day. Don Gorski of Fond du Lac earned a Guinness World Record in 1999 when he was confirmed to have eaten 15,490 of the McDonald's sandwiches in his lifetime. And the record was most recently updated in August 2021 when his total surpassed 32,340. Man, he's on a pace to it. He's got a pace to it. He is now celebrating 50 years of eating a Big Mac almost every day since May 17th, 1972. The burger fan who said he's he most often eats two of the sandwiches on a given day said he has only missed eight days in his 50-year fandom. I had a Burger King Whopper in 1984. One. Oh my God. <laughs> and one topper double burger in 84. There's a lot of other burger chains that I have never had the desire to try. I'll probably be eating Big Macs every day for the rest of my life. Man, this wow. guy, this guy, this guy more consistent than our show. Wow, look at his hair, <laughs> yeah. too. Uh, wow. We, we, we got to take some inspiration here when it comes to the Lou later schedule. Mm-hmm. Mm. Uh, we we're only allowed to, eight, to miss eight days in the next 50 years. All right. Great. All right. Got it. <laughs> Starting from this point forward. After all, we have big shoes to fill, seeing as how we are now the new CNN Plus, otherwise known as CNN Ultra. And Will is faster on the transition from one song to another. Wow. This man Will. continues to improve. This show continues to go places it's never gone before. You'll find this show on the moon and potentially Mars in the near future, although it'll probably only be available in 30 hertz. 
scrub. <laughs> so good luck. Thank you to everybody who joined us here today. Thank you to everybody who gave us super chats. Thank you to everybody in the community, the greatest community on the internet. Uh, staying strong. Bigger and better than ever. Shout out to Mo and his big stretch. Shout out to Will, as per usual. And of course, Otis for keeping us safe. We'll catch you in the next one. Actually, that's going to be tomorrow. We're going to be as consistent as the Big Mac guy. All right. Kind of want a Big Mac now, too. Sounds good to me. Later. <laughs>